very much to our moderator. Thank you very much to our moderator. Good evening to everyone of District 20 and beyond. Let me welcome our leaders of District 20. We have our International Director Ali Shabas Ali with us today. Members of our District and beyond, Division Director, PQD, CGD, District officials, past leaders, future leaders, precious members of District 20. Welcome to one and all to this one of a kind event, Leadership Beyond the Club. Now, what exactly is this event? You may have seen the posters and trying to figure out what is the district up to this time. Let me give you a brief intro. This is not a secret. You have given a speech, right? Taken up meeting roles in clubs, haven't you? Served as club officers and worked in different levels in your club as executive club members, which made your efforts so fun and loving and uh, stretch your abilities as a Toastmaster. Well, now we are going to help stretch your ability as a leader, bring out the true potential that's in you. And how not to help you by organizing an event that'll help you take you to bigger, higher and greater responsibilities in your district as area directors, division directors and district officers. The vision this year of District 20 was to create awareness. Now, how do you create awareness? It could be word of mouth. It could be posting information on social media, a happening thing now. Or it could be just you being the true representation of what Toastmaster is. In District 20 this year, the create awareness is the key point that we're looking at. And how are we trying to do this? By promoting Toastmasters in various platforms beyond the club, beyond the area, beyond the division, beyond the district international, online through social media. And what has really helped us this year was LinkedIn. And we have seen that clubs have picked up on these best practices and put up their information on LinkedIn, promoting a lot of new members. We have been through some challenging times, but now we have always been ready to be adapt and live up to the true potential of a Toastmaster serving leaders. This event today is a humble, humble gesture by District 20 to make all our members aware of what the true leadership opportunities you can avail in your district. Leaders and members, we have an array of presenters and leaders who are going to share their experiences. That's all that it is, experiences and knowledge to help you in your journey. As we move on to our agenda for today, we have six presenters that have prepared themselves to help you understand what the district leadership is all about, what the district leadership chair and committee looks for in candidates, and what is your benefit in being a leader of the district. We have a 20 minute question answer session that will happen towards the end of all the presentation. So please feel free to send in your questions via chat to myself and the moderator, and we'll take that during the session towards the end. Before we begin this event, I would like to call upon a, the, uh, a near and dear Toastmaster member of District 20 who has taken time off to be with us here today. And if I could ask, our international director, our very own DTIM, Ali Shabazz Ali. If you could just say a few words, if it would be possible. We would love to hear from you, your experiences and your message to District 20. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you our international director 
and the very own member of District 20. We've had a lot of dealings together, a, a near and dear friend, colleague, and a true mentor. Leadership exemplified. International Director, DTM Shabazz Ali. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Admin Manager, Biji. Well, I'm enjoying being an attendee today and learning so much. There's always so much to learn when people come up with their own perspective. So even if you have walked this path before, always try to hear other people's experience. They come up with their own bag of experiences, their stories, and it might help you go for the next position you're looking for, the next service leadership position. I just want to say that the book is the same for all of us district leadership handbook that is one book we use beyond club level leadership that's the right place to begin with start reading it if you want to go for any future role i do understand people look at the dtm credit and they just want to bargain with any role that comes in and take that dtm credit but let me tell you sometimes it's too late midway when you realize I wish I could have taken the admin manager role and not the area director role or I wish I could have taken the PR manager role not the division director role so there are a lot of options there so don't compromise the DTM credit there are different roles you can take which helps you to get that credit so start reading for that now, before you submit your application, read it again, probably before your interview. And you all have the right to submit your applications if you are eligible. So please do read. Looking forward for a great learning, for a great evening. Over to you, Admin Manager, Beji Gittins. Thank you very much, DTM Ali Shabazz. Absolutely, keep reading. Sometimes we forget in this day and age, but most of this information is available online. So for you, those that don't like to pick up the books or look through thousands of pages, which most of our leaders here have done, we have heard from all of you. We will try to keep up to that and read, read. Let us be aware and spread the knowledge. Thank you very much, DJ Malisha Basali. Appreciate that. Let's now dive, read, right into our program for today. Our first presenter, while he prepares himself in the background, let me just give you a brief intro. A very familiar face for District 20, a Toastmaster for 22 years, and a DTM, of course. He's the first district director of District 116 in Qatar that led the district to a, to a Smedley Distinguished and number one in the world in 2019. The District 20 Program Quality Director and District 20 Finance Manager. Previously been District 20 Leadership Chair, Realignment Committee Chair, DTAC Education Chair, Parliamentarian, Division E Governor and held various positions. Now besides Toastmasters, Rajeshwar is the director of the Global Board of Institution of Internal Auditors Advocacy for 2021 until 23. You're keeping yourself busy. <laughs> and served as a global committee for research and education advisors for 2017-2020. DTM Rajeshwar has prepared this presentation to help you understand what's in it for you and me as a district leader in District 20. Now, DTM Rajeshwar, you have 10 minutes for your presentation. We have our timer, Toastmaster Evangeline, who has joined us today to help. Thank you, Toastmaster Evangeline. You may be able to see the timer on the screen. Um, I'm not, if I could get a flash about that. I sent yes. her a message. Then Here you are. Her, I sent a message, yes. Do you see the timer now? Yes, I can. Yes, yes. Okay, please pin the timer and uh, the timing indication will be given to you at the time slots. 
And let's uh, take it from here. So when you're ready, the screen is all yours. Welcome. Thank you, Admin Manager BG Kitten. I have seen you in Kuwait, I think, year 2019 or 2018. And uh, thanks to District 20 leadership, particularly District Director and PQD, who invited me to be part of this uh, uh, training program. And I'm really excited and honored. And, you know, it's a great for the great opportunity and privilege to co-present with some of the very elite group of leaders. And, 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 and they will be in turn talking about district leadership roles and responsibilities and at their own perspective, but I will give something which is different. Now, first thing first, you know, Julian Tresher, uh, the, uh, the Golden Gavel recipient of 2020 said, you know, when speaker is nervous, it's all about you. And speaker is excited, it's all about the audience. You know, I feel really excited. I feel that why being in the District 20 along with many others. So let me share my presentation. So you have seen this. I know many of you have seen it. It's called Magic Eye. Magic eye means, you know, sometimes you have to really, you don't do it. Many people say that, oh, I can't figure out anything. Some people say different things. You have found square or stars or rectangles or some human face or something like that. The magic eye, there is a trick or a way to find out what it is. You have to keep, for example, a paper that magic eye. It don't normally work in a computer screen, but if it is, you know, like a, if it's in a printed in a paper, you take it on the face, closer to your nose, and push it forward. And when then you suddenly, magically, many things will appear. So there is, this is an analogy. When you're looking for a potential leaders, when you're looking for future leaders, you have to look both close and far and find out the, those leaders. But you will never, you'll hardly ever find a perfect leader. Because, you know, according to Khalil Gibran, a Lebanese-American poet, perfection is always overstated. What is needed is constant improvement. So the analogy is that you have to look for leaders to find them. And you will find plenty even in Toastmasters. This is another you know, defining moment for me when the, our current first vice president, Morag, was spinning me, giving me a pin as an immediate past district director. She said two things that day. One, she said, you are likely to be holding the Toastmaster International flag in the big platform in the convention. Your success depends on how you are trained your successes. That is sustainability. Another important thing she did, she called the club presidents of all those leaders who are area director onwards, who were pinned at that day, and thanked each club president for nurturing leaders who took up leadership position. So many of you think that this leadership position is an accomplishment for you. Not necessarily, not, not like that. This leadership position helps the club, helps the proud members, proud of their fellow member attaining that. So of course they motivate, get motivated, they get motivated and they will aspire to take up such leadership positions. So now, I mean, before we go, the first thing, what is in it for me in Toastmasters leadership? I'll give a general broad background. You know, you are serving an organization with a mission that is focused on development of individuals. There are not many organizations, not-for-profit organizations in the world that is focused so much on individual development than Toastmasters. So you can be really proud of being part of that. A great responsibility and opportunity when you take up leadership position. See, most of us come with the baggage, sometimes with the background, sometimes with the grooming, which could be different for you. But you can renew the perspective with a much bigger team to work with. And you can practice the teamwork and translate values and strategies into action. Believe me, these are transferable skills. When you, life skills, 
And when you learn in Toastmasters, you can practice at work or you can practice at community or practice many other places. Members, this is another important part. You know, members come to you for whether they are achieving their aspirations. You are challenged to guide them. Clubs comes to you to be facilitate many things that clubs need at you. It is you have a great opportunity to, to facilitate clubs. And you instill a role model, you become a role model, you instill enthusiasm, responsibility, and that can, you know, Maya, like one of the well-known authors says, you know, you don't have to do big things to leave a legacy. If you can change one person's life, you leave a legacy. So you get an opportunity to change many lives. This is the fourth one. This is the double-edged sword. That means quality of leadership. District factors depends on quality of leadership. That means if you, the difference between two, two districts are just leadership. How good is the leadership? The quality of the leadership. So you can be blamed for not attaining good things. You can get credit for when you achieve good things. Now let's look into why there is a hesitancy for leadership. That is, what are the membership members' concerns? What are the myths about it? First thing, I'm content to the role I have. That means people are not ambitious. They're not aspirational. They are, as you know, in fact, I liked uh, our R.S. Sujit mentioning long ago that, you know, many people like to languish. That means they are lukewarm. They are lacking the They don't want to have much more with the Toastmaster. Second thing is, you know, work-life balance. It's very critical. You know, how, when, when you join Toastmaster, whether we have time for work, time for family, time for other things, your social engagement, your fitness, many things. You have to have time management. In the leadership, they teach you time management. You don't, the th third thing is you don't have necessary expertise. This is an important thing. That vulnerability is inbuilt in every facet of life. Irrespective of what leadership position you take, you become vulnerable. Are you, this is something like human fallibility to those we know about it, we don't want to take the risk. The fourth thing, I don't think I get an opportunity. This is a negative perception. People think that we don't get, why go to DLC? I won't not get selected. Again, it is not right. Now let's look at what are the other deficient practices in leadership. We are part of many people witness people in the leadership chart, but not really playing the leadership role. That means, you know, this is from Good to Great, an author by Jim Collins. He talks about even the leadership bias. You have to fit in the right person at the right seat. So don't look at, you know, you as a good area, a good club leader. It may not, he may not become a good, good area or good division area. Similarly, you need to have its own competency to fill in the leadership roles. Cookie cutter approach. I don't know how many of you are familiar with cookie. You prepare cookie, it could be round shape, oval shape, or rectangular shape, or a pyramid shape. But that means, when you're teaching leadership to your people so, or your people with whom you work with, you try to make them like what you are. You don't try to experiment with them to make them what best they can be. It should be best of them, not the best of you. So that is also another deficient practice. Third thing, you teach leadership as a skill set. That means if it's a formula, you know that when you encounter this situation, this is the way you attack. No, when you have a mindset of a leader, you become, you understand the situation, you support, you find out the solution yourself, you work what fits in there. Leadership is a destination rather than journey. Many people think, okay, I reached area director, I reached division that I don't want to go far. That is my destination in leadership. I learned enough. No, it's a lifelong quest for learning. You can continue to improve. How do you nurture leadership development? This is important. Grow own leaders, not select leaders. Because if you're an area council or a division council, be part of the division council, area council, and learn from them. Don't make the district leadership or to select leader or district director to select leaders. You, you groom the leaders within this council. Invest in yourself. This is the tagline I like the most. All of us have to spend the time, spend, take the effort, spend some time money to invest in ourselves to become better. So this is one opportunity when you get to Invest in yourself to grow. And youngsters, you know, millionaires matter. Today they are in, they are in a hurry. They want to achieve more in a young, young age. But are they being prepared? Consciously prepare them. Create a culture of learn where learning is value. Like for example, today many people are attending, they want to learn new things. That's a creating a culture in District 20 to be a learning district. Because Toastmasters is a 
it's a learning institution we are all here to learn if you are willing to learn there is something to learn in everything now what is in it for me you know this is something leadership and communication skill you know the the tagline where leaders are made is a powerful affirmation of the nexus between leadership and communication extend your network when you are in club you know 25 people when you are in area maybe 100 people when you are in division maybe 1000 people when you go to district you could learn even 5000 you should network even with 5000 people that's a great learning opportunity project even management skills you know this is constantly we keep learning now i know many of them in our districts in, within the region who take up project or event management as their as their passion or as their even profession because they groomed out of it learn to work across this age group this is something you know which you will have to learn today's technology even the youngsters becomes you know the people who will be who become a team leader so you have to be careful you have to learn to work with them experience to run a service organization you know the toast master is a service of name but i remember our pdd ragan will be speaking next mentioned that you want to start an ngo or for the care for old people or something like that he has an experience now there is a lady called uh, uh, julius or something like that and she says you know she has written a book about how to run an ngo okay now you know why how do you what is it why how are you ready when are you ready you are liked and respected you are responsible you are ready excited to forge relations so collaborative culture is something very critical you learn from other learn from leaders what good leaders does and what people good leaders will never do you have to learn from them know how the organization works how it achieves its objective for some toast master mission how it is achieved what are the ways it is achieved how do you know when you are not ready it's my care about title position respect and not for role itself you have to understand the role that's why the roles are being explained now after me hard to speak up people hesitant to speak up even if what they speak would benefit the organization a lot they still don't speak up they think that others are generally lazy you and sneaky or are entitled that not trust with your nasty or entitled mean they get try to get the position and directing rather than that in today's leadership skill is doership leader skills unless you are a doer you cannot be a leader i leave you with a quote from david gergen he says leadership is a journey each one of us has to take our own path and get there in our own way good luck to all the aspirants all the future leaders all the potential leaders let the power be on you over to you thank you very much thank you so much dtm rajeshwar for the inciting information about what's in it for me so i understand you've busted the myths and we're definitely now ready to listen on what the roles and responsibilities are actually are thank you very much we really appreciate your time and effort with us stay with us for the question and answer session towards the end thank you ladies and gentlemen let's now proceed with our next presenter our next presenter is a distinguished toastmaster who led district 116 to become the number 1 in the world in 2019 2020 he was the second in command as a program quality director when the district became number 1 in the world he started his toastmaster journey in 2008 through just a speech craft program conducted by qatar toastmasters club held various leadership positions from president all the way to mentor district leadership chair district program quality director he is now the past chairman of engineers forum and in 2016 was bestowed the honorary award of toastmaster of the year chosen from 8500 toastmasters of seven countries and also led his district to be the smedley distinguished during his term to help us all understand the role of the most important ex composition in the district an area director please help me welcome distinguished toastmaster raghavan menon dtm raghavan you. yes thank you oh, biji and there i'm sharing the screen 
All right. A timer may know how this 10 minutes divided, uh, the color codes, five minutes at what time? Timer? Eight minutes, <clears throat> nine minutes yellow, and 10 minutes red. <clears throat> five minutes green, right? <clears throat> All right. Thank you. So the next 10 minutes, I'm going to explain why you should become an area director. Among the audience of 47, I see most of them are already area director or above, except few, I think three or four I found without title. So assume that they are the area director aspirants. But those who are currently area directors, for them, this may be a revision, you know, what they are supposed to do. I'm sure they are aware of it, but still this may give them some more ideas. And I will be sharing the PDF version of this presentation at the end of this training, either me or from the district admin manager. So you don't have to make any notes, just listen. So now today I'm going to talk about the role of area director. Now let's see what exactly this area director role means. Area director is the first link in the district leadership team. So you have worked in the club level and you have become president or VP and you are very comfortable. Now this is a time to get out of the comfort zone. This is where the real leadership is lying. You know, leading a club with whom you are very familiar with probably years together, you have worked together or stayed together, you have, you have presented together. So you know everyone. But when you come out of the club and get into a bigger platform of an area, which consists of three more clubs or two more clubs of this kind, that is where your leadership matters. You learn a lot. So let's see what is that uh, learning part is all about. You are the information conduit between the district division and the clubs. You're not a supervisor, but a resource. You are more experienced, more knowledgeable, so the clubs can take help from you. You're not a spy of the district, but you are only an advisor. You're not here to you know, tell something which is happening in the club, but whereas if you find that something is not happening right in the club, you as an area director has a responsibility to correct them, to advise them and make them do the right thing. Now, why members become area directors? This is based on a survey conducted by an independent body. It says, majority of people take it up to learn higher leadership skills. So they, they know that there's something more than a club leadership in the area level to challenge themselves. Some people think that whether I'll be able to do it or not, let me try. Out of the true value for Toastmasters, they, there are a group of people who will die for Toastmasters. They, they'll do whatever they want. So a division director or district director says, can you become an area director? They say, of course, yes, I can. Because it's out of love towards Toastmasters. And there is a small group of people, which our international director Ali mentioned, is to become the requirement of DTM. There's no harm. I would say that if somebody is taking up the role of area director to become a DTM, that's fair enough, it's allowed. But do what you are expected to do as an area director, not just end of the year, take the credit. So that is fair. So these are the four main reasons why people become area directors. Now let's see the four responsibilities of area directors. They are very, very simple. I always say that to become an area director and complete one year term, it is not a big task. It is very simple. You plan it methodologically, methodically, and that is becomes very easy for you. It's a cakewalk. So what is the first responsibility? Visiting your clubs two times in a year. It's nothing. I would say that you should visit the club, all the meetings if possible, but TI requests you to attend only two times in a year, make a report on the progress of the club in terms of distinguished program and recommend them what to do, how to achieve DCP goals and become a distinguished or higher. So this is your responsibility. And the next is helping all clubs to become distinguished or higher, which I already said. And the third is organizing an area contest. 
Now, this is only once in a year. You do it just once in a year area contest, but you can start the planning, uh, you know, well in advance, have a team. You don't do it alone. So don't think that area director has to do everything on his own. He or she has to form a team whom you can delegate this power, but supervise them, advise them how to do, and the team can execute. That is where, again, you are learning your leadership skills and chartering a new club. This is also an important task, though it is not mandatory, but I would say that every area director should aim to become a president distinguished area. And to become a president distinguished area, you have to charter and there's a net increase without losing any of your existing clubs, you have to add one club. So I assume that you don't lose any club and you have to add. If you lose a club, you have to add probably two clubs to become president distinguished area. Never lose hope. Don't say that I will not be able to do it, but start planning this from day one. And once you start planning from day one, everybody will have some source, some contact, some corner of the audience, the crowd, who is interested to improve their communication skills. That may be your community, that could be your uh, countrymen, that could be your language people, that could be your college institute or your office, your company. You know, there are many, many opportunities where you can always look for an opportunity to spread the goodness of Toastmasters, which you have experienced. That is the whole purpose of uh, starting a new club. You spread what you learn to others. Who and how can become an area director? So who can become? In so far as applicable, practicable, this is the words of TI, that means as far as possible, the area director candidates shall have served in the district council. That means there's with club president or VPE, or you have other roles like district admin manager, district finance manager, district logistic manager, or district PR manager. All these people can take up the role of area director. This again, you remember this word, in so far as practicable. You feel there is someone who is more enthusiastic and he wants to become an area director, he can. You know, there's no harm. You can't stop him from becoming an area director. You can't say that you must become a president or VP. It is not mandatory. It is desirable. It is advisable. But you can, uh, somebody else also wants to become, he can. Now, AD is elected by the area council, but TI, as per the manual, recommends district director appointing area directors. This is very important because we are tuned to this area director election, but TI recommends in the new leadership manual, if you see, district director can appoint or should appoint as area director, but that doesn't matter if area council is capable of doing an election and selecting the right person for that role is always good. Advice to the prospective ADs I have is very, very simple. You know, don't think, you know, this don't, if someone thinks that, oh, I don't know anything about area director role. Oh, hi, I can't do that. I, I would say relax. None of us were born with all this knowledge. We gained. How do you gain it? By reading, which our international exit reading. There's one. Number two is asking somebody else. Third is there are fantastic trainings provided by the district. That itself will give you a lot of information, a lot of knowledge about it. So there is absolutely nothing to worry about it. That can I become a district director? Am I capable? Will I be able to do it? Uh, will I fall short of expectation? Never ever underestimate yourself. First, show your hand that I want to become an area director. Prepare yourself that you, I want to become an area director. That is where the starting point. Then everything will fall in place. There are people to tell you. There are people to guide you. There are immediate past area director who can give a lot of trainings. And that's it. That's not a big thing at all. If you don't have the know-how, we will train you. There is fantastic training from Toastmaster International prescribed training, which across the globe, people are trained on it. Clear, conscious, complete communication is the key. Area director's main role is communicate, which is, of course, we are all learning to communicate properly, area director also expect because you are the link between the clubs and the district or the division. So this is becomes very, very critical your role. So if you don't perform well, that's a problem. So it's always a good communication. Delegate, take help, as I said, be organized. That's all you have to do. With this, I request all of you who are present here who are not become area directors to take up these challenges to become area director and learn. It's a fantastic learning experience to go higher. 
Good luck to all the prospective area directors. I request the district to circulate this to all the members who are not present today, but let them also read and understand the contents of this presentation. Good luck and back to the MC, Master of Ceremony. Thank you very much, DTM Raghavan, for the very extensive approach on this very important role of an area director. You've definitely inspired our members. Thank you very much. We sincerely appreciate your time and effort. Do stay back for our question and answer session, wherein we would definitely need your expertise then. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move up a little bit higher to the next chain of command or you can see the next role in the district which is of a division director and to present this presentation or information about the division director we have another very own member of district 20 a speaker a leader a communicator and a humanitarian we all know the youngest toastmaster at the age of nine so we all know that already a distinguished toastmaster the highest honor that he was bestowed by Toastmasters International. This gentleman was elected as the youngest district director in the world when he led the district, which was Bahrain and Kuwait to the top 10 in the world. Another Smedley Distinguished District Achiever. A certified digital marketing professional from the Digital Marketing Institute of the University of Bahrain, where he was the top of the class, a TEDx speaker. And our presenter, DTM Kuram Salman, was also the district leadership committee chair for the year 2020 2021. And he says that him and his team thoroughly enjoyed making the candidates sweat from their tough questions. I doubt that very much. But you definitely chose a great and a good team of leaders for District 20 this year. Let me present to you DTM Kuram Salman to explain to us about the role of a division director. Over to you. Thank you, our MC of the day. Before I go any further, I just wanna make sure I'm audible, seen, and so are the slides. Can I just get a thumbs up or a yes? Yes, good. we Thanks can see and hear you, all good. Mm -hmm. Lovely, thank you. Welcome everybody. It's a pleasure having you over here. Just by attending this session, you are taking that step towards making yourself a better leader. And it is my honor to be presenting to you what is the role of a division director. Now, in District 20, we've got nine division directors. Nine is a good number for a division. And what I'm gonna be covering is what do these people really do? So we're gonna go with in terms of our session today is why do divisions even exist? Why do we need all these divisions and areas and all this stuff? But I'm going to talk about divisions in specific and what do they really do? So when I was a division director, when the leaders who spoke just right before me, when they were in their place as a division director, what did they do? And then I'm going to take you in and my journey and sort of a behind the scenes of sorts as to how did my term as a division director went and that's going to be all the fun stuff that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to ask the crucial question towards the end is, should you become one? Is this the right thing for you? So let's have a look at it. Why do divisions divisions, and division directors even exist? And according to TI and many other leaders as well, district directors can't be everywhere, right? Imagine when DT Mali Shabazz was leading the district, there were seven countries. Before that, there were eight countries. District director is one as opposed to eight countries. Now, they couldn't be every single place, obviously. So that many a times became the role of the division director because they were the representatives of the district director for their respective divisions. And they're essentially the district director of the division. Now, don't let this get to your head it is just a matter of honor and servant leadership. But that is the truth because district directors couldn't be everywhere. So that's why the role of division directors was introduced. In fact, this was introduced for this very reason after the role of the area director was introduced all the way back. And which is also why they work very, very closely, mostly 
with the district director, of course, at Parkwood, other leaders of the district XCOM as well. So what do division directors really do? And their main role is that of support and being a resource and being a figurehead, a motivational figurehead and an inspirational figurehead for the division. The ground level work is always done by the area director. They're the ones who are the closest to the club, which is why we always say that the success of a district really depends on that role of the area director, because if they do their job well, everything else falls into place. And it's the opportunity and the responsibility of the division director to make sure that they're doing that job very well. So they have to be in touch with the area directors constantly. And they basically aid in administration of the whole thing. So club officers training, renewal of the members, DCP points and all of that. While the area directors are doing it closely with the clubs, they're sort of looking at it from an eagle's eye point of view. And then they are also in preparation of the speech contest. Of course, you have division contests that are happening after the area contests that are coming in. And they assist in training to area directors and club officers as well. You notice how there's area here, there's area in the back as well. So the division directors, their main responsibility, if I had to sum it up, would be to be in touch with the area directors to provide resources to them and to make sure that they are getting their job done and also to help clubs achieve distinguished goals. Now, division council, as is shown by the district leadership handbook as well, which is basically what you have to refer to when you take up any sort of a role. If there's a division director, there's an assistant division director program quality, there's an assistant division director club growth and area directors of the division. Keep in mind, they're not division club growth director of the division, they're assistant division director club growth. And this is how the whole team is structured. And this provides you with a lot of leadership opportunities, of course, because you have the experience of handling it with the club, with the area, and then hopefully with the division as well. This, going back to 2017 and 18, was my division council that I got an opportunity to work with, and I was so, so very proud of this team as well. Now, the competencies that are required as per the handbook as well, the skills that you're developing throughout, you've got the strategic thinking and planning, you've got empowering and developing members, you can coach, you can mentor your area directors, your team, the presidents of the club, because that is what your role is as well, and you develop, of course, analytical skills. Then throughout the characteristics, you've got core values that you need to have, that you work on, your empathy, your creativity, your service orientation, because we are in the field of servant leadership. And the attributes that you develop, that you should have, and that you work on going further is your punctuality, your proactiveness, of course, your resourcefulness, because that's what you're supposed to be. And you are, as I mentioned before as well, a motivational figure. Now, the requirement that you have to become a division director is that you must have served at least six months as a district council member. A district council member is the president or the VPE, or of course, you've got the area directors, you've got even the admin roles that are voting roles as well. So the admin manager, the PR, uh, finance manager as well. So you need to be a member of the district council for at least six months so you understand how the whole thing is. And that's how, when you're eligible to apply for the role of a division director. Now. In my opinion, the basics of leadership that you need to learn and absolutely need to know, you can do that very well at the role of the area director. Anything beyond that is you just practicing that on a larger scale. If you do your role as an area director very well, then any step beyond that is you practicing your creativity and having fun with the skills that you've just developed as an area director. So let me take you back to my, my term as the division director, because in my journey as a leader within the world of Toastmasters, the most fun that I had was as the division director. Now, and that all can be summarized very well by this picture right over here. Now, the two gentlemen that you see besides me were senior Toastmasters and they were my area directors. And I had so much fun dealing with them throughout and the whole success of the division, of course, is attributed to them as well. Now, we the focus that we had as a division, and this is just as inspiration. So if you take it up, these are a couple of things that I did, and I believe my term was a bit successful, then you can work on as well as like taking, to, taking the division to greater heights. 
that's what the role was. That's what we wanted. In anything that we did, in anything that we committed to, that's the singular thing that was driving us throughout, that we have to take the division to greater heights, and we ended up doing that as well. We had different highlights that we had coming in, where we highlighted all of our members. We even had a Division C app that we had built in, which was quite a success for the time that it lasted, and the credit goes to Toastmaster Nagendra Sitaram, and this also was a critical factor for our success throughout as well. Then we had a whole initiative called Creating Competencies, because C and C, where we had a contest boot camp, we had a PR Connect where we taught people PR branding and everything was a bit newer at the time as well, and the push from TI was just getting started. And right over here, we had a storytelling contest. And before Alan says that this is not branded, this the permission for this was taken by TI as well. And we also had a different couple of series videos that we had that I had so much fun shooting. And this actually gave me experience in how to speak on video and how to communicate on video. And on that note as well. And of course, the crowning jewel of our contest was of our my whole term was B Taxi, where the theme was Make Your Mark. And we had Kaishika Rodrigo come all the way from Sri Lanka and speak to us. So, and throughout all of this, we had so, so much fun and planning things and coming up with creative ideas just to take the division to greater heights. And I was very, very grateful to be surrounded by all the leaders that I was surrounded with, my area directors and my team who were able to help me out very, very well. Now, the question is, should you become one? And the answer to that is, if you wish to ex explore your leadership further creatively, then yes, you should. You've learned the leadership basics. Now you wish to have fun with it, then yes, you should. And you want to learn delegating because the area director many a times does the groundwork themselves as well. But the division director has a lot more opportunities to delegate different things as well. And you can have a lot of fun with that and learn that very crucial and essential skill as well. And that you're willing to commit to bettering your leadership skills and competencies throughout. So if any of these things that I've just described sound like you, you should definitely think about becoming a division director. Now, I reached out to our international president to see what were her thoughts on becoming a division director, and this is what she had to say. Robert Frost said two words, diversion in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled to roads. And that has made all the difference. Her, she too took the road less traveled, and because she did, it made a huge difference in her world because she was a division edge director where she served 468 members, and she learned how to cast a vision, create a plan to serve 468 members, and uncovering creative solutions to challenges and executing a team on the plan, celebrating success with many. And that is coming right from the top of the food chain in terms of leadership. That is Margaret Page, our international president. The vision that I have for this term, for all of our members and for the DLC, and this is the request that I would have, and more of a challenge really, is that let's have nine division director elections. Let's bring back the district councils where we stay up till two or three or four in the morning as well. Let's have elections. Let's have all the leaders who are competent enough and capable enough running for it as well. And that's a snapshot for me from my division contest. I wish all the leaders, aspiring ones, all the very best. Have fun with leadership. That's one of the most important things that we often miss out on. Back to you, RMC. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, DTM Karam. Have fun with leadership, of course. And why not listen from all of you experienced gentlemen have taken the district to a much greater level. Thank you very much for the time and appreciate your efforts thus far. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen that we are really progressing well in our agenda. And uh, from some requests from our audience, we would like to bring in a little bit of interaction or pre pawn our question answer session to, a, to just the three of our gentlemen who just spoke while we have the information fresh in our minds. So I would like to invite our presenters, DTM Sundareshan Rajeshwar, Rag DTM Raghwan and DTM Kurram. So you're here ready and let's take some questions from our audience. Our audience members, please feel free. You can either raise your hands and uh, our moderator will unmute you and let's shoot the questions. So we have DTM Sundaration who spoke about what's in it for me. I mean, what's in it for me as a person coming in you know, an experience of not doing any roles? So how can I aspire to become 
the leader? How do I know if I have it in me? Would, would you care to explain this a little bit from your experience and knowledge? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned it, you know, many people don't take up leadership because of some myths that, you know, am I ready? Am I, do I have enough knowledge about leadership? Or sometimes what is the work-life balance to get into? And these are some uh, fears people have. Other than, you know, other than the, whether the you know, district itself will give an opportunity. So we have to first you know, allay these fears and take, take the plunge. Even, you know, many times, you know, when people don't attend DLC for fear of not getting selected and it could be an embarrassment or something like that. We should get into attend DLC, even for even if you are not serious about the role, look at for look at for division directors DLC or you know any if you are done already division director, look for uh, CGD in DLC and qualify them. So if you attend the DLC, you can again apply for. If you don't attend, you have no chance to get into that uh, position at all as per the new rules. So it is uh, my own experience is that you know sometimes. In every position I had to contest from, of course, except area when it was Qatar was area in formation long ago, that is 15 or 17 years ago. That time I became Aston uh, LGM, something like that. So, and then we became division, it was with Kuwait and other, we became one division between Kuwait and Qatar. So I took a chance of getting into, I liked it and continued and where I am today. I'm happy that I did that. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. We have our area 19 director, Toastmaster Dinesh. I've raised his hand. Toastmaster Dinesh, let's hear from you. Good evening. Thank you, man admin manager. And I thank you to all the presenters who did the wonderful presentation. My question is, as I could heard, DTM Raghavan mentioned the, uh, being an area director to fulfill the requirement of the DTM project. I believe I think not uh, necessary that uh, for the DTM you should be the area director. I, as I believe or as I know, maybe the president it will fulfill if I am not the wrong. No, you have to have a district uh, position. That could be area director, it could be district admin manager or logistic manager. So any district position is required. President of the club is not uh, enough. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Dinesh. So now, DTM Raghavan, the, the role of an area director sometimes can be quite overwhelming, especially coming from a president or VP education or any member from a club level. So how can the club leaders help these members to prepare themselves or help successors like you this is a this is like a baby step so in your experience how can we motivate members to take up this role the first step of leadership which is the area director and what are some of the challenges that they face see to me uh, i'll tell you my uh, my personal how i became area director I was, uh, I joined Toastmaster in 2008 when I was secretary of the club. Nine, I was a VP education. And in 2010, my area director at that time, when during a casual chat, he said, uh, uh, I'm looking for a successor for me. And uh, I mean, he was not even considering me as a successor because probably I was only a VP education. So he was expecting the president should become, you know, that's what is. But I jumped in and asked him, why not me? Can I become area director? He said, uh, yes, you can. But I thought you want to become the president of the club. So I did not become a president of the club. I straight away become area director. So it's up to the individual. You have the drive in you. You want to learn something new, which you are probably, and as I told you earlier, you want to go out of your comfort zone and try something which is uh, you know, more challenging than being a club president. I never became president of that club. Of course, I became president of three other clubs, but that club, I even till today, I've not become. This is my home club. But I don't regret, you know, but I got an opportunity, I jumped. I strongly believe that in Toastmasters or anywhere in life as well, 
an opportunity knocks at your door never ever say that let me think i let me ask my wife or give me 24 hours this kind of a answers i hate to hear you have to jump and take it yes i will do it then you think how to do it probably you may not know how to do it but that you can do it later on that's my approach back to you biji absolutely we have this uh, sort of uh, presumption that you have to go through the hierarchy like member to VPA to president and then going forward. So it, it takes a little bit of, I say, guts to go up to that position and having the right support. I mean, you must have had support from your club or mentors to push you to that other level, which is from area director and then up to division and so forth and going on. So coming to DTM Khurram, in your uh, your whole tenure as a division director and then of course going up to the district you see that many of the area directors also had to go through some of the challenges to take up even higher positions so what was the different skill set that they need or what is the different mentality that they would have to take upon themselves to move from as they move up this hierarchy of leadership in in your opinion how was it for you so th thanks for that question Pity. I think when it comes to leadership beyond club and area, it all boils down to one word, and that is passion. How passionate enough are you in order for you? Because many in many situations, it is sort of a thankless job as well, because you will you're servant leaders, right? We're all serving, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. But if you're doing it for the sake of just getting a thanks or, oh, you know, I'm going to get these awards and all these accolades, then that's not really, you're not achieving the objective, right? So it's about having the right passion and about the the drive and the will to be able to improve themselves and to be able to okay so for me division director halfway through was having fun with what I've learned but also it was about giving back because by that time I graduated from the university I was in the workplace and I landed my first job because of Toastmasters so in my head throughout it was because I wanted to be able to give back and one of the ways that I could give back was to be able to serve the members as I was served as well. So passion, having the right drive and having that servant leadership mentality could really put you on the right path and right, right intentions as well. Hope that answers your question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Integrity over overall it just comes through. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. I have two, I have three questions that's come in from our guests. So let's just, I'll just go with the first person I see on the screen. I see DTM Suresh Babu, he's one of our division directors. So over to you, DJ Suresh. Oh, please unmute yourself. Thank you. I cannot hear you. No. Can you try now? No. Can't Can hear you. you. Yeah. Would you want to type the, your message on the chat? Okay, thank you. So let me just, uh, let me take back, uh, take, let's go to another question here. And then we'll have another five minutes and move on to our next presenter. So I have a question to DTM Raghavan Menon from a gentleman named Kayem Thomas. So he says, um, I joined Toastmasters in 2010. I raised my hand in the time I noticed that Toastmasters are making a group or gang just before the area director elections to become the AD. And in 2020, I'm the area director as there were no groups formed for some reason. So your comments. Hmm. A little political here. So I believe this is Raghavan, uh, yeah. Tim Raghavan, this is for you to yeah, address. Yeah, it is a little political. But all, why do we see, yeah, why do we yeah. see this sort of an uh, arrangement during this time, which is not right? And so what do you think? All I can tell you is, you know, uh, groups could be there, but either you try to be inside the group and be one of them, or 
try to be outside the group and have enough support for you because uh, you know this is something which is probably your club or your area but uh, but i have not seen this happening everywhere though it is there in some places some people support someone but support is always uh, given to some people when even in the us election uh, you know two people don't win only one person wins whose most popular person will be elected or he will be the nominated candidate the same way also try to be the most populate, uh, popular as well as preferred uh, candidate from the group obviously you will get elected from the, your area i mean the group when i say your area so all i can tell you is uh, work with the clubs work with uh, your area clubs well in advance prepare yourself and then get nominated with the support of everyone the support is very important so i really don't know about the group but support from all the clubs in the area is the crucial word which you have to have it so work towards that i'm sure now you learned it so you have become area director already thank you back to you viji thank you very much dhitim raghavan and kaim toastmaster kaim i hope this has answered your question one last question from toastmaster killer so please over to you Hi, good evening. Uh, my question to uh, Division Director Professor uh, Kuram Salman. Seven out of nine Division Directors has been appointed uh, by the District Director last year. And you've been as a District Leadership Chair. Do you believe is it a good practice for an organization like Toastmasters International? And what can we do to avoid such situation for all the division directors been elected by the floor what can we do absolutely thank you for that question killer in fact what you're doing right now is what we can do to avoid a certain situation that happened now you have to keep in mind seven out of nine division directors were appointed last time as well we were in a pandemic people were losing their jobs people are not coming forward we're still in a pandemic let's not forget that so which is why the division the district director and the team now came forward with this opinion that we need to be aware of what it takes to be a leader so we need to ensure that such events are happening and a certain level of awareness is created so that leaders are coming forward and that another part of it that is very very crucial that was mentioned multiple times over in all the presentations is that you need to be able to prepare your successor and that's a part that i believe we missed out on quite a lot specifically in the last year but before as well and which is why i ended my presentation with exactly that statement as a challenge to the current division directors is to be to ensure that you have your successors prepared because if you do and if you do you keep in mind preparing a successor is not a privilege it's your responsibility it's it's a thing that you are supposed to be doing as a leader it's not an added plus it is something that you should be doing and if you're not doing that then you're missing out a huge part of it so in order for us to avoid that all the members need to be aware that there is this thing we need to be taking part of it and events such as this help a lot and all the current leaders that be it the area directors or division directors or even beyond that need to ensure that they are preparing their right successors to be taking up the mantle once they go and that's how killer i don't know if you know but throughout my whole team has been to leave a legacy whatever you do you try to leave a legacy and a huge part of leaving that legacy is making sure that your successor is in place as well hope that answers your question and i hope to see you as a division director sometime killer thank you very much thank you so much i hope killer that has answered your question if at all there are more queries let's take that up during the next session so thank you all gentlemen very much question, be allowed Please. Uh, please do stay back, but we have to proceed with the next session now. We'll take the questions later. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Our next presenter of presenters will be discussing about the trio roles, which is the club growth director, program quality director, and district director. To present the first role is a member of Aldari Toastmasters Club since 2002. This gentleman has served numerous positions in leadership, public relations manager, program quality director, our immediate past district director, and as the past club growth, club growth director, in his term, he has led the district to be a smedley distinguished. 
to help us understand the role of one of the trial roles in the district, club growth director, is our immediate past district director, DTM Mohammed Salim. Over to you, DTM Mohammed Salim. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Biji. Hope you can hear me. Can you all hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, straight away, I will be moving to the presentation. But before that, uh, I would like to thank a couple of uh, leaders over here. First of all, DTM Ali Shabazz Ali, who really pushed me to become the club growth director during the term, and the past district director, DTM Kuram Salman, under the leadership who I served as a club growth director. We do have a couple of leaders who I really need to mention is uh, DTM Mona Aukar, actually. I really need to mention because with uh, her uh, inspiration, actually, we went on to become a spreadly distinguished. So she was the one who was pushing towards the end that, yes, we can make it to towards medley distinguished. So worth mentioning these uh, leaders over here. And I would like to mention that the club road director role is uh, the most toughest role for uh, any leader, I, because most of the district directors who um, are present here had not served as a club growth director actually i think uh many of the vendors that actually because it's a really tough job if you really take it up actually and uh, there were very few survivors who move from club growth to program quality director the history of district 20 i could say that uh, me and the uh, khalid abdullah are very few names who really survived to reach out from club growth to program quality director. I think that's one thing really worth mentioning. Here. That really says that how tough the role it, itself. Now talking about uh, the role over here, we are talking about the club growth director. Is there anything? Uh, Okay, now, first of all, we need to understand uh, before we go into the, uh, the role of the club growth director, the distribution, which really says that we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. This is really precisely for the club growth director because uh, the club growth director charters new clubs and again at the same time. They are the one who makes the clubs in achieving excellence. Uh, they might say that uh, the program quality director is uh, in charge. But later during the presentation, <clears throat> you will understand that it is the role of the club growth director also. Now, talking about the club growth director role, the club growth director role provides an opportunity to be a part of a global organization. To be very honest, actually, until I was the district VRM, actually, I didn't know what uh, size the Toastmaster International is all about. Actually, when I became the club growth director, when I met the leaders across the globe, I understood that there is a lot of opportunity for us to learn and we can grow in terms of Toastmasters. Because uh, worth mentioning, there was one Toastmaster from the United States actually who had mentioned about the lead management system actually. Uh, that really helped during my term to grow as a club growth director. This really helped us to plan better. So this is where you become part of a global organization and you really you know serve the community. Now, club growth directors help the district grow by helping and building new clubs, strengthen the existing clubs and grow membership. This is what the role of the club growth director. Now, club growth director goals we need to really understand. Create an overall marketing plan for the district actually, because there is something which we really uh, fail to understand is that creating an overall marketing plan for the district, you need to understand that we are not a paid organization, where in which we are a non-profit organization. So we cannot allow to pay for membership fees or for marketing our Toastmasters. So what we need to do is we need to utilize the marketing resources available to promote Toastmasters. That's the most important thing. So the club growth director closely works with the program called uh, the PRM in creating a marketing plan during the beginning of the top. This is the Understanding between the PRM and the club board director is very crucial. Actually, most of the time we, they, they think that they are two separate entities. But in my case, actually, I know that the PRM closely works with the club board director. Now, the second point is strengthen each club in the district by providing tools and knowledge needed for achieving membership growth. There are a lot of tools in terms of uh, creating understanding the club membership. Actually, most important thing actually as a club 
leader most of the membership uh, uh, the vice president membership need to understand that there is a form which is called the membership survey form actually which most of them they don't do basic to start with at the club level is the membership survey form from there on that really helps us to coin better the problems and the issues of the club the members the areas and the division actually now third provide resources to help struggling clubs and recover and grow so this is most important things now here when you talk about resources one thing what i really understand is the club coach actually appointing a club coach uh, really helps to revive it because uh, when the club coach role is not taken much seriously but during those terms actually the club coach always helps you know to revive the club there's one thing called the lead management system actually not many toast masters would be are aware of it because uh, those who are in the club board director are getting this uh, software from the toast masters actually wherein we get lot of rules see what happen is that when you don't understand the lead management your job is unfinished actually because you have been marketing toast masters around the uh, region wherein there are some toast masters they don't know whom to approach so what they really do is they go to toast masters and they inquire that how to join toast masters as or to start a new club those uh, data are shared with the club board director in form of the toast master lead management so when we understand the lead management it is easier for us to follow up on those cases now track renewals is the most important thing see, because uh, for me actually i am not a chartered accountant but uh, i really track very well with the numbers so tracking is a most crucial thing because there is a wonderful formula based on wherein how to track membership payments now when we talk about the direct goals we have the four goals which is the distinguished district the select distinguished the president distinguished and smedley distinguished this smedley distinguished was something which was launched during our term when we were uh, the officers myself dijem khuram and dijem wafa that they introduced the smedley distinguished and during that time we had no goals that we should go for smedley distinguished because during concerning the membership and the clubs we thought we would settle with either select distinguish or president distinguish but there are certain reasons actually one support from the regional advisor in those days really pushed us to become the smedley distinguished district now the most important for a club growth is the team because not what happens is that you are not a single person who are you know managing the entire district actually you need a proper team when you talk about a team there are four teams four uh, members which i really you know value them their role one is the club extension chair who really looks into the club sponsor committee and the club extension and club quality chair who looks after the club mentor program whereas the club retention chair heads the club committee club coach committee whereas the new source research chair coordinates for the club leads these are the four crucial uh, chairs which uh, there are additional chairs but if you form your uh, team ahead and you will be very well uh, you know successful so in this context actually i had uh, i need to mention the four chairs uh, dtf jahangir khan was the club new resource research chair the club extension was toastmaster ola and toastmaster fatima abdullah club retention and club quality chair dtf munira why i need to mention that they were really the pillars of strength during my term as club board director without which actually we would have not reached anywhere now talking about building new clubs actually you need to understand that there is not just community and corporate clubs there are many clubs wherein you can really charter clubs when you talk about community college club company club government agency advanced toast masters military club other institution or specialized club and correctional institution correctional institutions you can really visit but not as permanent uh, member but at least do visit uh, to charter a club over there when i mention about any other institution i was fortunate that we chartered the st paul's toast masters club actually one of the church clubs which really you know uh, it was started at the end of the term but it really worked out for me now talking about failing clubs these are the clubs which we need to really uh, understand how many members are in each club which are the clubs which really need coaches this is the role of the club growth director work with the area and division directors to really make it happen now there are clubs which uh, are between 12 to 20 which again uh, needs 
attention because they could easily fall into the clubs which are into uh, less than eight members. For that, actually, our uh, then district director, Richem Khuram, introduced this program. Actually, he was very much in, uh, uh, you know, boring for that matter. Actually, he was insisting that I start this program. Initially, I was not in favor of this. But when I started this program, it really gave a lot of response, the mini mentor program. This is a wonderful tool for the clubs between 12 to 20 members. Now, this is where you need to really understand your you know, you know, goals, where you need to track. First is the paid clubs. Second is the membership payments. Number third is the distinguished club. You might be thinking that why is the distinguished club more important than that belongs to PQD. Uh, during uh, our term, actually, what we really, you know, for a sake of fun, we, me and uh, DTM Wafa, you know, had a competition that uh, every year we get 65 to 70 percentage of the clubs distinguished. Why don't you reach out to 80 percentage, 85 percentage? You know, what happened in turn, the program quality director really worked that actually, DTM Wafa Salman, and brought those extra numbers to the clubs actually, which really contributed to the success of the district actually. So we walk hand in hand. These are the three, um, you know, musketeers we could say that who made the distinct uh, districts medley because without each other, we we are we didn't, you know, we were not complimenting each other. This is a wonderful team to work with actually. I really appreciate their support. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster BG. I'm waiting for any question and answers uh, towards the end. Thank you. Thank you, DTM Salim, for giving us your depth information and how you've taken the district up in this very important yet challenging role. The question and answers would be towards the end after all the three roles. So please stay back and would love to hear from you towards the end of the last presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Let's move on to our next presenter. A physiotherapist by profession, and a Toastmaster by passion. For over 10 years, her decade in Toastmasters has been this long and truly has very humble beginnings from a member to the area to division director, the best division director in 2017-18. In 2019, she was the best youth leadership coordinator the DTAC Vice Chair for 2019-2020. The Immediate Past Program Quality Director was awarded the excellence in the August Convention for leading our district to Smedley Distinguished in Education Roles and proudly serving today as the District 20 Director. To present the presentation about the role of a Program Quality Director, Please help me welcome our district director, DTM, Alifia Lakrawala. Thank you, admin manager, Toastmaster Biji. Just give me a minute. Okay. So good evening, leaders in District 20, beyond District 20. Thank you for this opportunity where we can come and excite members regarding each of the district XCOM roles, starting from right from the area up to the district directors. So role of a program quality director is one of the most important role in the trial position. Let's understand. And I would encourage members to understand why this role is very important and definitely take up leadership position in trial within District 20. So what are we going to see throughout the presentation today is why, who, what, how, and why. Why? a program quality director is required for a district? Which member or who can become a program quality director? What does actually a program quality director do? How does a PQD or the program quality director contribute towards the district mission? And my learnings in a nutshell, and later on we'll wind up with why be one. 
So I would like this to be interactive where members can tell me that why do we have a program quality director in the trial position by Toastmasters International? What is the purpose of having somebody call as a program quality director in the district? Y'all can type or either, uh, you know, just unmute yourself and let me know. Nobody? So nobody knows that why do we have a program quality director in the district? Okay, I see one response. Consistent quality, very nice, shows progress, definitely. Okay, let's understand why do we have a PQD in our district? A PQD is responsible for the education of the members. So he or she is the person who comes up with quality trainings, which eventually lead to quality leaders. That is the tagline of Toastmasters International, right? We build new leaders or we create new leaders. So quality education, quality training can be, give you quality leaders who have the right knowledge, the right tools to lead the district and in turn make more leaders. If you have the right tools, right knowledge, you will have quality clubs because clubs exactly know what to do, when to do, and how to do. That eventually leads to success and leads to a happy Toastmasters. Whether it is the district, whether it's the entire organization, a division, an area, a club, anything. That's why a program quality director is a very important role in the district where that person is responsible for crafting each training, not only for the club, but for the areas and for the division. Moving on, who can become a program quality director? Anybody? Which member can become a PQD? The qualifications are any member who has served six consecutive months as a club president. Mind, not a club, district council, but a club president. So a district council in the club level consists of a president and a VP education. But here we are just looking at a person who has served six consecutive months as a club president and at least 12 consecutive months as a PQD, CGD, a division director, or an area director. So any one of these positions which are mentioned, but consecutive served as a club president, that is mandatory. And any of the four mentioned positions which are there. But the same person cannot be re-elected to the same office for a succeeding term. Means what? That example, if Toastmaster Tom is a program quality director for 2020, 2021, he cannot become a program quality director for the next immediate or the consecutive term that is 21, 22. If Ms. Uh, Toastmaster Tom was a program quality director for 2019, 2020, yes, maybe for 2022, 2023 year, he can become a program quality director. So that's the difference out here. So I did say in the beginning that what does a program quality director do? He or she is the second person commanding in the district office, responsible for all the aspects, whether it comes to education or training. And if the analytical skills and the skills of uh, delivering excellence is put into place right, these competencies are practiced right by a PQD, Minimum a district can achieve is 40% of distinguished clubs. A program quality director looks over the entire speech contest from the district perspective, starting from club up till the district Toastmasters annual conference or DTAC, or which we call. Again, so it comes from the club level all the way to the district contest. 
So this is in nutshell what a program quality director overlooks. How does a PQD contribute towards the district mission? I think some time back only uh, DPM Salim shared his uh, the district mission. Can anybody read out the district mission to me? Just unmute yourself and read out the district mission. We build a new club and support the others club. All clubs in achieving excellence. So the first part is that we build new clubs. Whether you're an area director, whether you're a division director, whether you're on a trial position, we all sign something called as the officer release form. In that, we do pledge that we will be contributing towards the district mission. The district mission first part is all about growth, which says that we build new clubs. And the second part says that we will help all the clubs in our district to achieve excellence. So that becomes a part of retention. So a program quality director out here helps in a club and member retention. The analytical competency a program quality director contributes is by analyzing the clubs, their status, and contributing, as I mentioned, ahead 40% of the distinguished club. We deliver excellence. A program quality director delivers excellence by contributing to the latter half of the district mission, which we build all clubs and we support all clubs in achieving excellence. Excellence means either distinguished, select distinguished, or a president distinguished status. And as I said, that if all the skills are put in together and a PQD definitely supports towards the district retention, we can achieve more 40% of our distinguished clubs in our district. My learning as a program quality director, well, it is very recent because it was my pre previous tenure where I served as a program quality director for District 20. I understood when I applied, I understood the various protocols when it came to election, the various policies which are laid by Toastmasters International, bylaws and governing documents. This is something which is very important when you step onto a leadership journey, that you need to be well read, you need to understand, because eventually members look up to you as a leader for solutions. So you need to know what is there in the bylaws, what is there in the governing documents. I was fortunate enough to meet so many beautiful people and leaders during my tenure and before and after in District 20 and beyond. So much of interaction, peer PQD calls, um, the TLI learnings or the trainings which we had. I understood the organization's perspective, a leader's perspective from this particular organization when you are on the other side of the table where you talk about targets, you talk about incentives, you become a resourceful person because you're reading the speech contest rule book, you're reading the bylaws, you're reading the policies. I was more organized because every training had to be given to each division. A follow-up plan was led with each team and led huge teams, example, the DTAC team. I see the red, but just bear with me. My other learning, some innovation where as a program quality director, I did or rather the team did for me was an extensive pathway team we had. We came out with a slogan where each one can reach one and teach one. Because it was that time when I took the role, it was that time in Toastmasters period where we were moving completely to pathways from the traditional program. And that was the only year where we had, there was no more traditional program. So it was important for me, or rather the team, to make our members educate about Toastmasters. A lot of initiative my Pathways team had taken, and it was a fulfilling, enriching, satisfying experience helping each and member out there. Something which we did was all trainings were under the district umbrella because it was online. We were in a pandemic. So any training we did, the entire district could benefit. 
I did something where we sent out, I did send out individual congratulatory emails to members and the response and the motivation, the excitement the members had. This created a difference. This created a momentum in members to achieve more, to work towards the education goals. We had D20 marketing team from the PQD side uh, posting all over Toastmasters or any training which was belonging to District 20. District 20 was visible on every face of any social media uh, related to Toastmasters. And something which the district started last year was individual member mentoring. The district created a pool of mentors where the members could come out and reach to uh, the district for creating this. Now, this all of this, I couldn't achieve alone. I had the robust support of my trio last year, headed by the district team or the district director, who is the immediate past district director right now, DTM Mohammed Saleem, and the immediate past club group director, DTM Khalid Abdullah. And I can never forget this team who helped me throughout my tenure, making the quality, making the trainings so fruitful, so exciting that the members not only enjoyed the trainings, but the contest, we had innovations, we had contest online uh, protocols for the first time. It was all possible because of these members who were on my team. So leaders, if you become a part of a team, you can exercise so much of your competencies, so much of learning is there. These leaders helped me flash PQD trainings or District 20 trainings on all social media pages. And I can never forget my pathway managers and the award compilation team where these leaders have visited each club in our district to educate them, give them individual uh, coaching or mentoring rather when it came to pathways. And the award compilation team definitely helped me during the DTAC tenure. Now, why you should become a PQD? Why, what is there? What is there in becoming a leader or what is there in becoming a child? This is an excellent opportunity to serve your district. Whatever you have learned in the previous years as an area director, division director, or at your club level, it is a good opportunity to put some innovation, put some creativeness in the trainings, in the education system of your district. Become a PQD. At the trio, you are a part of a global organization. I think our IPDD did, did mention this. And we live by the tagline of Toastmasters International, where I said that we create more leaders. Effective training, effective education tools can create effective leaders. And we develop various competencies like managing people, organization, analytical skills, team management, team building. We can practice different type of leadership skills, uh, you know, uh, like direct leadership or strategic leadership. These were the skills I was able to practice. So definitely, if you feel that you have a team, do go for a program quality director. And lastly, leadership is unlocking, it's about unlocking people's potential to become better. So if there is a spark within you where you can say that, yes, I can do it. I can do something for my fellow Toastmasters, for my district do come ahead and participate in the DFC. With this, I end and back to you, Host Master BG, our Master of Ceremonies for today. Thank you very much, District Director, Itim Alifia Lakhdavala for a very electrifying presentation on PQD. Definitely has given us a little bit more insight into the challenges and commitments and the excitement that the role entails for us members. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and efforts and please stay back for our Q&A session that will immediately follow after the final presentation, which is, we serve, we save the best for the last, by the way. Now this particular gentleman is a Toastmaster since 1998. DTM Imtaz Ahmed has served District 79 as a district governor in 2004-2005.
He's been a keynote speaker and is a keynote speaker, organized and chaired numerous conferences for Toastmasters and beyond, facilitated numerous workshops on leadership, being a parliamentarian, judging, conflict resolution, soft skills. He's very passionate about his current position as the current assignment as the District 20 Speakers Bureau Chairman, an excellent opportunity for Toastmasters or members who want to see your speaking taken to another level, a career level. Taking on Toastmasters leadership roles beyond the club, starting as an area governor, truly in his roots, proved to be one of the best decisions that he has ever made. And I see it has transformed his life. He has enjoyed tremendous success. DTM MTS has also received the Presidential Citation Award in 2021. What a proud moment for us in District 20. The highest honor accorded by Toastmaster International to its members. He's a very humble gentleman, a mentor, a leader, and remains grateful to all his Toastmaster friends for giving him the opportunities, the wonderful leadership opportunities that has helped him overcome many challenges and provide with the perfect platform to practice one motto in his life, which is live to learn and learn to live. To explain to us, District 20 members, one of the most important roles of a district, the district director itself, please help me welcome our final presenter for this evening, DTM Imtiaz Ahmed. Thank you very much. Madam Toastmaster DG, for that exhilarating introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, leaders, International Director Ali Shahbaz, District Director Alifia, and all the other leaders, present, past, and future, welcome to this session. I've been actually admiring all the speakers before me because not only did they explain the roles uh, which they were asked to talk about, but they actually shared their personal experience and that too within 10 minutes. So I will try to do, emulate those and hopefully provide some kind of an insight into leadership beyond the club and specifically being the district director. I'm sure you've all heard of this uh, phrase, the low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit implies that in any tree, you can very easily reach and pluck and enjoy the low hanging fruit. But if you want to get the best, the sweetest, the most delicious fruit, you need to reach higher, you need to climb higher in order to enjoy all the great things that you can get out of those fruit at the top. So this has already been explained by all my fellow speakers, presenters here today in some form or the other. Please try to hold on to that con concept and as we go through this presentation. So what, do we, what can we expect from this session today? Here we go. We look at leadership roles beyond the club, just as a, a summary of what we have seen so far. The district director, the role of this office, what are the requirements to become a district director, the responsibilities, the resources which are available, you're not on your own. There are rich resources available. We'll just look at these. And we look at the key competencies which determine the, or define the critical success factors. Now here is a very nice infographic from TI, which talks about the various leadership opportunities beyond the club. And not surprisingly, even the region advisor is listed here. 
So you see, we've seen all these so far, and now let's just get into the district uh, director. But before that, you know, there are certain requirements and, and expectations from anyone who wants to be a district leader. And that has also been specified by Toastmasters International. So it's worthwhile going through this document, and trying to understand and see if there is a fit between what you aspire to be and what is expected of you as a district leader. Now, what is the district director expected to do? Responsible for administering and overseeing the district's day-to-day -day operations, the finances, as well as the human resources. You're not only an off, you're the only officer who's authorized to sign off on contracts. Lead, guide, empower, and support the leaders to perform their functions and help in their development. Participate in the district leader training, mid-year online training via pre-district leader uh, tutorial, which I understand are really now becoming legendary. So what are the requirements for one to qualify to be a district director? First of all, you need to be uh, must have been an active member of a Toastmasters club, which has been in good standing for the preceding 12 months, or at least for 12 months in the last three years in the district which you intend to serve. And you should also have held being a president, a club president, for either six months or, and also, of course, not all, 12 consecutive months as a PQD. CGD or a DD, division director. It could even be a combination of these things. And as uh, is applicable to the PQD position, you, can, you may not hold this office in consecutive years. So you can take a break and come back if you feel up to it. All right, so now here are the, actually the responsibilities uh, which the district director is expected uh, to, to perform. And the first is to provide guidance. As the chief executive officer in any organization, this is what the DD is expected to do. Not only supervise and guide all the elected and appointed district leaders, but is also responsible for their success. You need to work with each member of your team. Your leadership skills not only facilitate or direct people, but it sets the tone for the rest of the district, people to follow and emulate. So you need to really raise the bar really high. And of course, you have to be an inspirational and motivational leader without which these goals may not be achieved. And in order to really achieve all those awards, like the Smedley's district and beyond the presidential district, as we used to know it, yeah, well, you really need to inspire your team to, uh, to go the, that extra mile and in order to achieve all those goals and objectives. Delegation, the art of delegation is so crucial and critical. You need to, you will, in the process of being a DD, you will definitely become specialized in that. And conflict management, they, there are bound to be conflicts, number of them. You, should, you will develop skills to resolve uh, conflicts very effectively. And collaboration, networking, people within the district, with, uh, beyond the district, Toastmasters International, and in the communities, in the corporate world, and so on and so forth. Collaboration is limitless. So then you will also be self as the CFO work, so to speak, managing the financial resources. You, you are responsible for the complete uh, financial and fiduciary operations of the organization, of the district. So you will also create the budget. So all these things, these skills, even if you're not a financial, you don't have a financial background, these are things you will develop in a very, very nice way so that this, these kind of skills, like someone mentioned earlier, these can be applied in any walk of life, in your professional life, in your personal life. 
thing, you know, all these competencies and skills will take you, will serve you tremendously. Yes. And as for the chairman, you will chair every meeting in the district ex excom as far as the district council. This is again a huge learning and development opportunity. And you will also learn the Robert's Rules of Order or popularly known as the parliamentary procedures. These again are skills which will hold, will serve you well beyond the Toastmasters world. And you will also be responsible to appoint the leaders and committees uh, as provided uh, in the district by us. You will also serve as the chief operations officer. You will be working with Toastmasters International on matters of operations, and you will at the same time be leading the district to success by helping clubs achieve goals related to education, membership, and training. So it is very important as a district director to have a thorough knowledge of the governing documents and all the manuals for the district and club leaders in order to really serve them and perform your own task well. Uh, it is, of course, very important to have an open mind and open attitude and a willingness to change. There is no room in Toastmasters International to have a leader which says it's my way or the highway. So if you've got that kind of an attitude, you'll have to change it for sure. All right, so here are the resources which I was talking about. All these will serve you very well. So these are accessible and very, uh, you know, you can, it's very interesting read, which is, will help with your own uh, personal development plans. The key competencies which I was talking about, these are the skills that you will require and you will also develop. Please don't be concerned if you don't have these. You, you will learn by doing, all right? So, and uh, this table explains the, the skill, the competency linked to that and the evidence of the competency, all these behaviors which you can I, uh, start uh, you know, practicing and developing. Skills, the knowledge that you need, the characteristics uh, that you have need to have as a leader and the attributes, all these are things which I personally have experienced and I can vouch for that uh, through my own experience. And I will leave you with these final thoughts on leadership. So a good objective of leadership is to help those who are doing poorly to do well and to help those who are doing well to do even better. So now what kind of a leader should you aspire to become? There's a very simple answer to that. Be the kind of leader that you would follow. With those words, I thank you for your attention and hand over the control back to the master of ceremonies. Thank you very much, DTM Imtiaz Ahmed. Very profound thought itself. Be the leader that you want to follow. Absolutely, the change starts from begin within. Thank you very much for your time and for giving us your in-depth knowledge in that very precise presentation. And now we would like to hear from you and all of our presenters while we open up the Q&A session for our audience. So can we get all our presenters back onto the screen? And let's get our audience to prepare themselves to ask the questions. Moderator, can we spotlight all our presenters? Yes, so we discussed about the roles of an area director, division director, the district trio roles, and what's in it for me? What's the benefit of taking up all these leadership positions? So let's begin with one question that I have received, here you go. Okay, so I have a question for our panels here, how teamwork is ensured with leaders? So in your different roles, how do you see teamwork? How is that ensured with our leaders? Can we have, say, for example, DTM Rajeshwar, would you like to add your two cents on that? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a very important question. Teamwork, you know, the, the, one of the Toastmasters International 
uh, if you look at the district leadership or governing document, the whole document, every position in Toastmasters leadership is a team position. So no one is has to work alone. So the fundamental to leadership is in Toastmasters particularly, is building the building team and ensuring that responsibility, accountability, and at the same time, and you you can give you can assign the uh, you can assign the you know the work, but the responsibility lies with the leader. So it is very critical that when you assign with the with the team, you take the responsibility, you monitor the work is done, and you empower the people at the same time to function well. So what mistakes probably I mean many people does is you know. If I have, have I done well as a club leader, I think I'm good enough to be an area leader, area director. If I done as a club, I, I'm good enough to be a PQD or CGD. They won't, I mean, people are, people want to have a shortcut to success, but very critical is to learn the process well and move step by step. And, uh, and now, I mean, it, we need, that needs, a, that needs a mindset. I, as I mentioned in the presentation also, more than the skill set. Skill set is, you know, if you know, if you have a problem, how do you fix it? Mindset is a leadership acumen or leadership uh, trait, where you, you know, look at the problem in whole and find a solution that can be, uh, that can be, you know, a solution, not only for the current situation, but have some far reaching benefits. So I think teamwork, I think it's essential. Now, without teamwork, we cannot achieve anything alone. Exactly. Absolutely. I, I agree with you on that. And we have a question by Toastmaster Dinesh, Air 19 Director, and this is to DTM Imtiaz. His question is, what is the difference between a qualified candidate and an eligible candidate for the district director post? The difference between a qualified candidate and an eligible candidate for district director post. Uh, I'm just trying to, yeah, thank you very much. A very interesting question. I'm trying to get beyond the semantics of the old, uh, you know, the, the two definitions. Yeah, well, uh, well in, like I mentioned, anyone who has uh, served uh, as a president of a club or and also as at least the division director of a, of a district is qualified. And to, to, uh, to contest for the position of district director. So, and likewise for each of the uh, uh, district leadership roles, there are uh, you know, minimum requirements specified. So when we talk about eligible, so I understand that my understanding is that the person meets the minimum requirements, has the qualifications, and then is eligible by, for example, having gone through the process, the hierarchy uh, of the leadership pathway, starting from the area director onwards to the division, the club growth, program quality, and is therefore maybe considered as uh, more eligible than someone who has not gone through that trust. Maybe they, they are qualified. They have been a division director. Uh, so they can uh, technically compete and contest and become the district director. And this has happened in our district several times. And this is perfectly all right. Uh, so because this, the, the rules provide it. So in, now, as far as uh, determining who is more eligible for, or even you could say for the sake of argument, who is more qualified, it depends on the member of the district council to determine that. Uh, so they, will, they can decide who would be more eligible uh, to serve as the district director. Uh, among, or if they have a choice, if they have to choose between two or more uh, candidates. I hope that has answered your question. Sure, thank you, sir. 
if time allow just can you open your the slide that where you mention the criteria for the qualifying the for district director post so do we have the time uh, toastmaster pd i would like to perhaps you can put that in your background let me just take a couple more questions and then perhaps come back to you sure sure yeah thank you Thank you, Toastmaster Dinesh. We have a question from Toastmaster Mona Lakha. Go ahead, Toastmaster Mona. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thank you for this uh, workshops and the, this event. I actually appreciate uh, all the uh, efforts that's been uh, done by our district directors and team. Now we know that any any success uh, in any organization, it will depend on the leaders plus the workers or here in this case we have the members now uh, again i will would like to thank uh, everyone who just thought about this and to uh, motivate and uh, bring us here to understand what is the responsibilities of each leadership here roles i mean uh, uh, my suggestion is can we have another sessions that can educate also the members? Because they are also uh, responsible of uh, voting and choosing the right leader here. So, so uh, at least we can get uh, balance. If we have a good leaders that will represent District 20 uh, next year. I know that all the ones who already served was uh, uh, amazing and they've done a good job. But now I think it's the time for us also to motivate members to come uh, uh, also and uh, um, uh, serve or just uh, let, let them uh, at least uh, vote and take this uh, responsibility because this is all for the members to be served. Thank you. I'm back to you, BG. Thank you, Toastmaster Mona, for that suggestion. That's well taken. I think our district director would like to add something to that since we have planned uh, sessions in the same idea. Perhaps she can put, shed some more light to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Big G. And thank you, DTM Mona, because I feel thrilled that, you know, members really want to know whom they want to work for. They want to be aware they are creating that excitement. So thank you for getting in that suggestion. Yes, we are in the planning. Maybe the announcement would follow, but I'm going to say it right away that we are going to have a follow-up event with the similar leaders on the 20 sorry on the 30th of november 7 30 pm where we will be showcasing a mock dlc interview and the various lessons learned whether with each position or as a whole as a leader and maybe we could just brush up on the council voting procedures today our district consists of more than 2000 members after so much of publication, after so much of creating that hype, we only have 41 participants. So members of the 20, y'all need to take charge now. If y'all feel that the members are at the priority by Toastmasters International, this year the district has taken those steps to go out of the way, to create that awareness, to have members involved so that they actually understand the procedure of what it takes to choose your leader. So do participate and thank you, Didi and Mona. We shall be having a follow-up event on the 30th. So do look out for the promotions. Thank you and back to you, Christmas speech. Thank you very much, District Director. We had a question from our division director, Suresh Babu, that was not taken up because he had some audio issues. So he sent the question across. And this is to DTM Kuram. And he says the captain is as good as the team, right? So how do you deal with difficult 
area directors who do not carry out their responsibilities in spite of your kind, polite approach and persuasion. So in your experience, how have you overcome that and what can you, what pointers can you give to our current division directors and area directors? Thank you, BJ, for that question. And thank you to DTM Suresh for that question as well. Although the question seems very simple, the answer to that is not. So let me just tackle it from a couple of different perspectives. Now, they do say that the team is as strong as its weakest link. So as a leader, your responsibility is, of course, to bring, try to bring as much as possible all of your team members to the same level of performance. Ideally, you would like to have that happen, but in reality, the case is often different. They are less divided into a green, yellow, and a red signal of sorts. Green is where you're understanding that things are not happening, so you try your level best, and that's where the kind, polite approach and persuasion really comes in. You try to be as supportive as possible. You try to practice your empathy, as that's one of the attributes that you have to develop as a leader as well. And you try to pitch in. You try to support. The yellow region is where things start getting delayed. Data directors not submitting their reports. There's no report of the contest that's happening. And that is where you have to push in a little bit. Then you try to see, OK, who's the area director? Who is there closer to him? Because many a times, they might not listen to you directly but they might listen to a leader who's closer to them. And that's okay. There's nothing to do with ego over here as well. We all have our ideals and our leaders whom we follow. So it's always best for you to approach them via, via if that helps in. But one thing that a lot of leaders do not know is that your post is not permanent. If you have been appointed or elected as the division director, area director, or beyond, it doesn't mean that if you don't perform, you have to stay that way. One thing that we don't want it to come to but it has happened in the history as well, is removal of roles. Now, you shouldn't go around threatening them with that. It's like, if you don't do your work, I'm going to have you removed. The only authority of that belongs to the district director. But I think it is a conversation to be held between yourself, your team, and if need be, your district director as well, that the leader is not performing and they need... What did Tim Rajesh were mentioned earlier as well is that our role is voluntary until we take it. Once we take it, it is mandatory. So we have to keep in mind that it is a responsibility that you have to fulfill. If you're not fulfilling it, you need to give it time. You need to give it some time and you need to go further with it. But if it if push comes to shove and they're not really performing and they're just there to get the credit towards the end of it, then I think it's a conversation that you can have with the district director to let them know that if they do not perform or one, two, three is not done, I think a removal is in order and can only be fair at the time. I hope that answers your question, Deacon Sir. Back to you, Vijay. Well, that's interesting. Voluntary and mandatory. It's very contrasting yet compelling. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Another question here. How is that district nurturing leadership, especially in these challenging times? How are we nurturing that? We, we may not be meeting physically, but however, we're all present online all over the place. So how is the district, or what are they doing to nurture that leadership aspect? Let's hear from um, one of our panelists. Please feel free to unmute yourself and give us your thoughts. I think I will take this question uh, since I'm heading the district this year as a district director, so leaders, thank you. Um, well, nurturing leadership or development of more leaders is done via good education, good education trainings put in place, place and following timelines. There is a set timeline by Toastmasters International. So the district does keep a track of that and keeps the announcement within that timeline, time frame, or time period when members in turn are aware of it. There is a mode of communication which is built between the district, the division directors, and the area directors. The most commonly mode used right now nowadays is WhatsApp and any official email, uh, announcement thereafter is followed by emails. Then we have awareness through social media. 
various platforms of social media where we do create excitement by uh, announcements and eventually having such events where you educate the member, you let them know that yes, we do understand and we do know that y'all have the potential to go ahead and serve your district. I would just like to give an example where uh, last year I had uh, Toastmaster BG and DTM Allen served as my program quality director team members. I think they, they were able to perform the duty to the best of the ability. And when eventually when I became the district director, when I offered them a position, they were confident in the ability to do a higher task or a higher responsibility. So do, I think it's essential for all the leaders out here to have a team. That's the way you nurture, you develop more leaders. You need to have a team and you have to empower those team members. So eventually they might, you know, in turn come and step into greater roles. And that's the way the district has leaders year after year. With this, I give back to our admin manager of this master BG. Yeah, I just want to add a point here. In a part of your question, you asked uh, with the changing times, how do you nurture leadership? You know, the years 2020 and 21 moved leadership to new future vision. Even the LinkedIn CEO, the other day I heard a lady speak, the CEO speaking, she said, if your CV or profile not con it doesn't contain, has any, nothing, nothing about how you face pandemic or what are the changes you've done in your workplace or whatever you are doing, you know, you are not likely to be recruited. That means this 2021, uh, 2020 and 2020, the year 2021 has completely changed the leadership profile of the people. Like it, what is needed is like the currently is like courage, huge positivity, probably selflessness and trust. Even I, I'm an auditor. I'm supposed to trust God, trust I audit. But uh, you know, now with, with a situation like this, I started trust, we are to trust people and trust that. And that trust what we inculcated over last 18 months or 20 months is here to stay. Or oh, these habits like courage and positive, all these are here to stay. Even agility, resilience, all these are here to stay. We have to take the best out of it. And that will apply even in the Toastmasters leadership. So, this is the one part of the question I saw probably, I'll if you talk more about uh, the leadership development. Okay, another important point in leadership development is, did you invest in yourself? It's one of the things I like the most. You know, all of us has to invest, invest in ourselves to improve in the caliber as leaders or whatever we do. So we have to, the duty starts in, in fact, even Toastmaster International, there are two documents. One is, you know, that uh, the promise, the Toastmasters promise, and second is the club mission. If you put these together, you know, that it interest on each individual to do their best, to achieve the best of the Toastmasters. The Toastmasters promise clearly explains that the explicit duty is on the members to ensure they achieve what they, do, what they you know, aspire to be. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much to our panelists who've shared your ideas, your expertise. Thank you so much. We don't have any more questions from any of our audience members, but I thank our panelists for your time. And DTM Imtiaz, I believe we can take up Toastmaster Dinesh's question perhaps after the meeting or maybe on a private note due to time constraints. Thank you all very much for your time, for sharing with us the knowledge and helping us to understand what our district is looking for as far as leaders and why should we be encouraged to take up these positions. I thoroughly enjoyed the presentation that you have uh, made for our members. And uh, please stay back for the final closing session. For this, I would like to invite our 
district director. But before that, I have one more role to complete in the agenda, which is to get a small feedback from the positions of the district, which is the district PRM, district finance manager and admin manager. So I would like to call upon my colleagues, starting with our district PRM, to please Give us your point of view of how the experience as a district PRM has been for you this past couple of months. DTM Alan Paul. Hi, Toastmaster BG. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Hi. Yes. Uh, so yes, uh, the district PRM role has been quite interesting for me because the public relations was something that I was quite passionate about. And uh, the best part about being in this role is the team the District 20 PR team that I have with me. I mean, we have a lot of fun and we explore creative ideas. I mean, we are all like-minded individuals who love to explore new things. So being in this position in the district gives us that ability to do so. Now, when it comes to my personal uh, experience so far, being in a district role, now, if I, if, I, if I were to tell you about my work experience as a technical consultant, or as a senior technical consultant. Uh, I have no leadership experience as such because I report to a manager and I'm part of a team. But when it comes to my leadership experience at work, I don't really have it. So when I migrated to another country and when people were asking me about what leadership experience do I have that, they can, that I can bring to their company, I told them about what I was doing in Toastmasters International about my experience as a leader, empowering individuals, about working with the team, about resolving conflicts, and a lot of other things that I would miss out on if I was just doing a role as a technical consultant. So Toastmasters International provides us an opportunity to showcase that leadership skills, to learn from experienced mentors on how to be a great leader. So if you are taking up a leadership position in a district or a club or wherever, I highly suggest you do that because a platform like this where you can experiment with these skills, that is hard to come by. So don't wait. I would say if you get a chance to take up a leadership position, take it, seize the moment. That back to you, Toastmaster Biji. Thank you very much, a district PRM for your insight and um, now it's my chance to just say a few words. In this past couple of months, the, the role that I've taken up, which is the district admin manager, has been truly a role out of this world. I've, I have not had any experience at all, but as most of our presenters said, grab the opportunity because it's not gonna to come to you more than once. So when I was asked to take this position by our district director, I grabbed onto it not knowing what the challenges were, but I knew that I had the support, the support from the immediate past and manager, the support from the immediate past team, from the current team. As the admin manager, it is your responsibility to be the eyes and ears for the district. So pretty much keep yourself educated, aware of the Toastmasters bylaws, the international policies, keeping up with uh, members' concerns, you, you get that to a certain extent, not as much as all the other roles will. And of course, keeping sure that the records are proper and correct during the meetings. It gives you a whole range of opportunities that I don't think you will get in a club environment. Even though I was a VP education and president that really helped helped me with this skill as a district admin a manager and I really thank that I was given the opportunity and I'm so happy that I grabbed the opportunity and if you think that this role is too hard for you to do I don't think so no role is hard for anyone if you if you have the power if you have the energy if you have the drive the motivation it's okay you can do it and you know what, the best thing that helped me in this role was that I always could reach out for help and it's okay to ask for help. I think when you ask for help is when you learn to become a leader. And that's what helped, has helped me so far in this role. And I thank you for the opportunity, District Director. As we're waiting for the 
district finance manager to join in. I would uh, like to now just leave with one note that uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants that have helped us or pushed us forward. There was one person in your life that helped you, that believed in you and pushed you forward. So let's try to do that for someone else today. Be, be the person that pushes someone else to become a better leader and a person. With that note, I would like to hand over this event to our district director for the closing remarks. And um, before that, I, I came to find out that DFM is in the house. So please, if uh, DFM, Toastmaster yeah. Shabir Kutubuddin, if you're there, yes, please. So ladies and gentlemen, introducing our money man, district finance bunch. Over to you, few words. Uh, now this is about leadership. So let me, let me share with you my experience. Uh, it's been exceptional. Like um, there was a DFM who had been um, selected or what I should call as elected. And then due to whatever reasons I was pulled in and uh, take up the leadership role in a, in a very exceptional time. And uh, what I understand about leadership is first is understanding the people and being and uh, showing an empathy to what they want. And uh, I guess given the situation, uh, Corona and a lot of us face in our personal life or in our professional life, this is what a, a leader should do is understand people, understand their needs, the background culture they come from, what are they thinking, what are their requirements and try best try their level best to address them and help in a way. As a Toastmasters, we are here to help people to lead them. And uh, it's a public speaking forum where we all are here to learn. So leadership is what this world needs at present, whether that's in climate change or other key areas, where humanity at present needs leadership and uh, Toastmasters is a great place to start with where one can, one can build on their ideas, on their philosophy and how it can go and help at, let's say, start from their house to the corporate, their offices, workplace and probably world at large at some point of time. So my role so far has been as a money man of the district. I've had great leaders in the trio who have like kind of mentored, helped me to understand my role and uh, to deliver. And we all look forward to our leaders and the new leaders that Toastmasters would eventually build in. That's it, that's from my side. I'm, I've been running late from office, so haven't had a good chance to prepare a note for myself. Sorry for that. That's it, BG. Thank you to our DFM. You're so humble. All the work that you do in the background, it's definitely appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much to all our leaders. So if you can dream it, you. You can do it. That's what Walt Disney said. Hand over to our district director, DTM Alifia, for the closing remarks announcement and vote of thanks. Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster BG. I have a long list to thank, but uh, let me begin with our leaders who have come outside the district, but to the members of District 20 that the leaders were specifically chosen because they have done the DLC role before. These leaders who were here, besides me and DTM Salim, I think all the other gentlemen have been a district leadership chair. And we are fortunate enough that we have 
our past uh, leaders like uh, DTM Imtiaz, DTM Rajeshwar, who have been district leadership chair for the previous year for District 20, and they were responsible for giving or nominating one of those leaders who have served us in the previous years. And sorry, even DTM Kurram, I, I missed his name, I'm, apologies on that. Uh, this year we have uh, DTM Raghavan Menon, who has taken up the responsibility as the district leadership chair for District 20. I hope members y'all have received that uh, email, received that announcement that and the district is quite keen and uh, excited. The entire district office comprising of the PQD, the CGD, the admin manager, the PRM, the DFM, the district logistic manager, the translator, the head of Arabic affairs and the webmaster. We are here to give you all another training on how a DLC would take place what a DLC would expect in their candidate. The candidate interviews would be uh, for the division directors and the trial position. The DLC has been announced by District 20. We shall be having uh, from the 1st of December, sorry, from the 1st of November to the 1st of December, the DLC will be choosing its committee followed by from the 10th of December to the 10th of January. Members who are interested in serving in these positions, do send in your nomination to the DLC chair or to the district director. And then thereafter, there will be interviews of these candidates by the DLC, the protocol, the procedure, the time, the date, everything would be explained by the DLC. So it is a request that do not miss the deadlines. Do ensure that you apply in time and qualify for the candidate position or the interview by the DLC. Coming to my vote of thanks, sorry, I just went haphazard, but coming to my vote of thanks, I really take the privilege of thanking DTM Mithyas, DTM Rajeshwar, DTM Raghavan, DTM Kurram, DTM Saleem, our PQD DTM Khaled Abdullah for organizing the entire event for the district today, because again, quality trainings, quality education comes under a program quality director members. And the entire district office, the master of ceremony, our Toastmaster admin manager, ever efficient Toastmaster BG. So leaders really, really appreciate your time. This was something first time the district has done it and hopefully more members are aware and more members are excited to take leadership position. We will meet you on the 30th of November once again at 7.30 p.m. Uh, do we have the certificates of appreciation ready for our presenters, please? Moderator, thank you. This is a certificate of appreciation to our first presenter, DTM Sundaration Rajeshwar, for conducting the session on what's in for me. Thank you, DTM Rajeshwar. Appreciate your time, your effort, and all the service you have provided to District 20 over the years. Yes, I, we were a part of one district, but uh, we've all moved on and y'all are leading. You have led one of the successful district that is District 116 and we appreciate your presence and time today. Thank you. Our next presenter is a current DLC chair, a past district director for District 116, DTM Raghavan Menon. Quite enthusiastic, quite um, inquisitive and very much uh, efficient. Thank you, DTM Raghavan Menon for conducting the training on an area director role the key person in the district expo. We have our DTM Karam Salman, the immediate past district leadership chair and the past district director who took district 20 to a smedley distinguished district. Thank you DTM Karam for the knowledge for the, because I think what I have learned from DTM Karam is that the presence of mind he has and that I really appreciate that uh, when DTM Kuram has his presentation and he brings all the aspects of leadership in his presentation. So you were definitely an asset today. Thank you, DTM Kuram, for the 
your presence for today. Our immediate boss, District Director DTM Mama Salim, thank you, DTM Mama Salim, for being a part of this presentation today. I think some valuable lessons or learnings what you have shared today with us would definitely help our future CGDs and our current CGDs to imbibe and take District 20 to greater heights. Thank you, DTM Salim. And finally, our president citation, proud member of District 20, DTM Imtiaz Ahmed, who I have been fortunate enough to work last year as a speaker bureau chair. He was there and on many other occasions. Thank you, DTM Imtiaz. As usual, it was a perfect presentation. Thank you. Thank you, moderator, for sharing that. And with this, could we have a group photograph if we are there in the house? And the leaders are there, Toastmaster BG, Toastmaster Allen. Do we have, can we move on moderator? Uh, yes, even I would like to thank our district logistic managers team, Toastmaster Alvin and Toastmaster uh, Evangel for being the moderator and the time respectively for today. Thank you Toastmaster Alvin. You are always there as a backbone to support us. Toastmaster Evangel, thank you so much for taking the time as well. How many are there in the house, BG? Can we just, can we ask them to start the windows and take a uh, picture? Yes, and last but not the least, I should not forget our, our international director for Region 11. He is a guiding star. He is a guiding pillar for all of us here. I think all the leaders in District 20 at some point have interacted with him and we really, really receive the right advice, the right knowledge from this leader who's there. And we are so proud that we have a home district candidate as serving as our region uh, 11 international director. So thank you, DTM Ali, for your presence today. Despite your busy schedule, you did make and address our gathering. Thank you so much. Is anyone taking the photo? Okay, I think I'll take uh, everyone ready. One, two, smile. Great, fantastic. Thank you. Good night, good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Have everybody. Nice. Thank you, and we shall meet soon. Thank you. Thank you, leaders. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.